Hey, there it goes. Okay, yeah, we're live. Yay! 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 Oh, you know what? I should put I should put chat on the for the for the vod. I should put chat on. Yeah, give me just a second. What's a wait? What? Uh, vod is video on demand. Oh, up on this. Do you have yeah. it? Okay, I got gotcha. <gasps> you. did see some crawl. I saw some crawl. Oh my god! Yeah, look at oh, look at that. Can you see that? Oh wow! Yeah. Thank you. Oh my god. I read the Okay. Plane. Hey, we back. Oh, Zodiac Eclipse read the thing you wrote about working for your... Oh, cool. Yeah, I remember that one. Mm-hmm. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one that my dad wrote about yeah, working me for him? working for yeah. him? Okay. Okay. How okay. to work for my dad by... by- my daughter by my daughter yeah Something okay. like that yeah 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 and he wrote that yeah <laughs> i have <laughs> i have had to explain to your dad sometimes yeah. like like about jo- uh, zodiac eclipse joanna mm-hmm. specifically like you've got to remember that she is used to working for other people <laughs> who when they mm-hmm. say it's okay you know to make mistakes and learn from them they really mean never make mistakes or i will punish you yeah <laughs> she doesn't understand that you are being honest and sincere yeah. when you say that <laughs> mm-hmm. right working for him is a different thing it is yeah yeah so well, emma is tom's daughter yes the infamous tom yes so welcome everybody Woo! to bend time yeah. stories where we talk about whatever we talk about we d- <laughs> We do some stuff. We do. Yeah. We keep it uh, interesting. But for those of you who are here new, uh, we've got Amanda, AJK. That's me. uh, And we've got Emma Seeger. Yeah. Uh, And then we have a kid of mine who doesn't have school today on the floor. Yep. But she's going to be quiet. (laughs) (laughs) And then we've got a a dog who lives in among chat down there. That's right. Oh, I forgot to put alert box up there, too. Ah, I'm the worst. Velatala, thank you for the gift subs. What are you forgetting again today? I set up a whole thing, and then I forgot to add all the things to it. (laughs) Put this... Yeah, like right there. Right there. Find my links. There we go. I'm absolutely going to tell him that you referred to him. (laughs) As the Tom. <laughs> That's also how I refer to him. <laughs> the Tom. The Tom. <laughs> Love it. Did somebody say so, Krav Maga? No. Yes, somebody oh. did say. Oh, how's it going? His house? Uh, somebody did say Krav Maga. <laughs> so, yeah, we started this talk show thing, and at first we... Like, every week we'd have some kind of topic, and then we started yeah. getting off topic so much, we said, <laughs> maybe we don't need a topic. Maybe we'll just, just shoot from go. the hip. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we did that for a while, and that was fine. Yeah. But I feel like we're back to needing a topic again, so we brought a topic. We did. Welcome, topic. No. Hello. <laughs> I'm yeah. the topic. Oh, I brought the topic. You brought the topic. Yeah. You're so, our expert on the oh. topic. Oh. Yeah. So we, I've I got like my that. magic remote here. Let me, oh no. Ben and AJ agree too, too much. much. So that was one of our fundamental okay, so problems. We kept <laughs> waiting to have some sort of like really interesting debate. And, yeah. And, you guys we, just, and we kept on was, coming <laughs> up against like, yeah, I agree with maybe minor differences, but usually right. not even those. Yeah. Right. It'd be like, Ben, opinion. AJ, you're right. AJ, <laughs> opinion, Ben. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. our general idea is, because we were doing this weekly, and then we kind of stopped, and we were thinking weekly might be a little too, we run out of stuff. It was a lot. It was, yeah, it was kind of a I lot. I mean, well, yeah. and i going to be honest, like driving out here, I was like, and the kids were starting school. Yeah, well, yeah. There was and then, a yeah, lot really going busy, on. Yeah, for a while so there. So we put a pin in it. Yeah, but we have this idea that we can do, like, little field trips and do fun stuff and take some video, and then people will have something oh. else to look about at, like this, which is us. Hey, that's us. Doing Krav Maga. Emma's in there, too. <laughs> Emma's <laughs> about to be a con- an instructor. Yeah. I am. I'm a Padawan right now. I'm a senpai. <laughs> I think a senpai is the... No, yeah, no, senpai that yeah. works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a yeah. sensei yet. Yeah, not senpai. a sensei, but like an upper... I'm yeah, no, be. that works. Yeah, I only know that term from The Office, because Dwight was the senpai of Dwight's the... a senpai of The Office. Right. I'm the senpai of EVKM. Nice. I know, right? <laughs> so we did the ice bath. 
Yeah, with we did Adrian. the ice bath thing, and that was lots of fun, except yep. for the technical difficulties. I forgot because I we we streamed. I'll show you later. You didn't really get a tour of the place. Oh yeah. But we streamed from my balcony, which is where the ice bath lives. Oh yeah. And for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to stream from my Microsoft Surface, which is <laughs> yeah, twenty pounds of hardware in a ten pound bag. Yeah. In triple digit phoenix heat mm-hmm. and that would be fine obviously yeah and yeah it wasn't fine it crashed everything a lot yeah it might have been the hottest day of the year i very like, well might have it was been. like 117 and the, so yeah i <laughs> i put my surface in my freezer to cool it down yeah and then ran some cables into the bedroom where air conditioning happens and yep. it, it was eventually fine <laughs> oh boy oh my god good thing it didn't catch fire Oh, I didn't yeah. think about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you've done, like, like big boy filmmaking. Big boy, I <laughs> <Yeah>. have. <laughs> if I'd thought about it, I could have, uh, we could have watched, uh, could have watched your, but you did a short film about Krav Maga, Monkey I, in the Middle. I did. Um, yeah, I was just looking for, like, things to write about, and fuck it write about Krav because that's like one of the most important things in my life so you just write what you know and so I wrote it and and you know I wanted to film in my gym and so I went to my chief instructor and the CEO of EVKM and I was like hey I wrote a script about Krav Maga like here it is I had never met him before his name's Derek and and he was like, yeah, I'm so down. Like, I'm such a theater nerd. I also wrote a script. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, he's like, I've been sitting on a film script about Krav for like two years. Oh and God. I was like, holy shit, let's make both. <laughs> um, so we're working on his right now. But um, we filmed mine in January. And we've got it all edited and put together. We haven't put it online yet because... Um, we're still kind of in the process of festival runs and some festivals don't like to have the thing already released. Mm-hmm. They want to have the release. That's like for more high end festivals, but um, just like as a precaution, we haven't released it yet, but it, I will soon. Like I'm kind of getting sick of just like <laughs> sitting yeah. on it. <laughs> just put it out there, like put it on Vimeo or something and let everybody watch. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I, I want to see it online. Yeah. I mean, that's just me. But How did you get into Krav? How did I get into Krav? Um, I started Krav in October of 2017. And it was just um, the Tom had a couple of, like, colleagues. And he had an employee who had done it. Um, his coworker, Mike, had been doing it for years. Like, he's a brown belt or something like that. Um, and so... My dad went to a trial class, and he was like, shit was crazy. Like, yeah. we were punching each other. Shit was, was real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like, my knuckles hurt so much. And, and I was like, that sounds scary. Um, and then and then I actually went away that summer, and I lived, um, like, away from home for the first time, like, in my life. Yeah. And so that's when I kind of really started to, like – think about it more and actually like consider I might want to like get into some self-defense so that I know like I can handle myself um okay so that was sort of like uh okay so I'm out in the world by myself Um, yeah like I'm living alone and I want to be able to walk down the street and not yeah not need my mom feel burned Um, (laughs) right yeah so when I got back um yeah I I don't know I'd waited a couple months because I started in October but I think I I saw something on the internet that was like this girl went and did like a photo shoot with a professional photographer or maybe it was like a a friend or something and and he had ended up like attacking her and like I saw all the pictures and I was like, you know, (laughs) I think I'm going to go sign up for that (laughs) Krav Maga class. Um, So I just like signed up, went. I really liked the whole atmosphere of the place. The instructors um, were so nice, but also, like, you know, Krav instructors. So (laughs) I was like, fuck it, I'll sign up um, and do this. Like, I didn't really know how I was going to make it work financially, but I was just like, I don't care. I'm going to sign my name on the dotted line. And so I did. And, you know, I've been going, like, every day pretty much since then, unless, you know, I'm out of town. 
Um, and now I'm training to become an instructor, which is like not a thing that happens to people. <laughs> like, I mean, presumably um, it happens to some people. The instructors yeah. came from somewhere. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just like dumbfounded because um, apparently it's like an invite only thing. And I had, and mm-hmm. I had taught, and I had thought about it before. Like, oh, I'm gonna, um, you know, I'm gonna ask Derek because at this point, like me and my chief instructor had kind of become friends because I had made a film. I had done other things um, about Krav and like interviewed him for other projects and shit like that. Um, so we were kind of friends and then he asked me back in June if I was interested in becoming an instructor and I was like, yes, what, what do I do? Like, what, tell me what to do. I'm, I'm here. So I have my certification in, um, at the end of the month, 27th, 28th, 29th. Oh my gosh. It's a three day. I didn't realize it was coming up so soon. Yeah. <sighs> 14 days. <laughs> oh, it's two, like two weeks. Exactly. Holy wow. shit. That's um, yeah, I'm fucking nervous. I'm sure. excited, but I'm also nervous because like it's going to, I mean, they push you like you if you can't be. get through the first you know, whole like, year now, 10 Where minutes. Where has the time gone? <laughs> you can't get through like the first 10 minutes, you know, you can't you're done. It's like they the thing at the beginning is called the cauldron. If you can't get through the cauldron, you're not going to be an instructor. So like they push you and I'm like nervous for that, but otherwise I'm excited. Don't they have a cauldron in your belt test? You just had a big belt test not too long ago. Yeah, it's it's like a belt test I've heard. I think it's like two belt tests. So when you first get there, you pretty much do a belt test and you have to go through the techniques, hard, fast, strong. They go through mitt rounds like you have to prove physically that you're capable of being an instructor. And then, like, the rest of day one and I think all of day two and the beginning of day three is just, like, slowing it down. Let's go through the techniques bit by bit. Go through every single, like, muscle movement and why and how to explain it to your students and put it in context and all that good stuff. Um, and then the l- end of the last day is just, like, you're retaking your level one because I'll be a level one instructor, you're retaking your level one belt test, which mm-hmm. is um, your test to move from a white belt to a yellow belt. Um, so I'm just going to retake that. It's like, I don't know, two hours. Mm-hmm. And then you're done. And then you, and that's and your then final you work. test. And then you work. work. And then you teach people how to destroy others. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, actually a good segue to how okay, so I didn't I didn't know any of this going in. Yeah. I've never like hit people in my life. My first crop class was like the first time I ever I actually wrote about it. It's on Medium, but yeah. uh the first punch I ever threw and I ended up getting like a spontaneous bloody nose mm-hmm. and it was just like pouring all over. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um but so how is this different than like Ben said he did Taekwondo in high school, which explains why he's so freaking good. Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, and yeah. I was like, Ben was kicking my ass. <laughs> um, so how is this like different than other martial than arts? Than other or? martial arts. Um, I don't actually don't know much about Taekwondo, Ben. So <laughs> that, <ain't. laughs> um, that was my um, You're going to have to tell me what that was like. Okay. But Krav, OK, that's what I was wondering. I didn't yeah. know if you knew. Uh, martial arts, like a lot, when you think about martial arts, you're probably thinking about like karate and jujitsu and like taekwondo, shit like that. Um, which is very like, I don't know, like I think about like the karate kid where you go to tournaments and there's like rules and you can't do that and you can't do this. Yeah. I was, I was telling AJ before, before the stream yeah. that, I mean, I enjoyed taekwondo, but it, it is at least the way they taught it to me. You know, yeah. however many years ago it's a sport it's right. not self-defense yeah. it's yeah. you know as long as you don't have any weapons and you agree not to hit me below the belt or yes. try to grapple me i will kick your ass yeah yeah <laughs> and there's points and you yeah. you spar and it's and things like that um but krav maga is like it was created to be a self-defense system so it's like you beat the shit out of the person anything goes whatever you can do to annihilate this person that tried to attack you and get away safely yeah day one they were like finger up the nose and throat punch yeah i was like holy (laughs) shit (laughs) yeah yeah because you i mean like i think the bread and butter of krav maga is a groin kick and you can't do a groin kick in any other martial art because that just takes the person right out of the fight and the purpose of like karate is to fight the person get the points and see who's better at the thing but the purpose of krav maga is to 
kill them, <laughs> essentially, yeah. and get away safe. Well, it says in the wall, you can see it on the video, something about peace. Like, like yeah. you're learning this so you can walk in peace. It's right. not to, like, yeah. walk around beating the shit out of everybody. Right. Although you can. Yeah. No. Yeah. And we actually, um, we just actually just had, like, a whole, I've started to set in on, like, the instructor meetings. And um, Derek kind of went off about... You know, we stay away from murder language in this gym. It's, we're not going to say murder. We're not going to say kill. And I, I, I kind of have to check myself on that. But, um, yeah, the purpose is that you can walk in peace. So you can get home safely. Which ties back to being in Texas by yourself. Yes. And wanting to be able to walk peacefully. Yeah. And not have to feel vulnerable and scared yeah. yeah yeah especially since unless i was giving you rides you were walking everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> when i was when i started there i was like um i might be like walking over yeah. <laughs> like, or taking lifts and even lifts can be yeah dangerous, yeah, like, so you gotta, like, yeah you gotta just be aware yeah, yeah. well yeah. On, on both sides a friend of, of mine in texas is or was at the time a lift driver yeah and yeah he had some scary situations yeah it's he had people niche. pull knives like weapons Oh, when you've got your back to somebody, that's not a good place to be. So, yeah, I was actually like when I was there, like looking up boxing because I thought like mm-hmm. boxing was going to be the way. Like at least I'll learn how to throw a punch. Right. Um, but yeah, when I got home, it was like Tom was like, "I tried this Krav Maga class. You should go." And I was like, "Okay." And so I went. That's awesome. Yeah. So we did a class with you, yes. which is showing on. Yeah, it's kind of up up on the screen there. In heavily edited form, it's yeah. it's about a ten minute loop because I cut out all the all the bits where we're getting instructions that you can't hear because it's a crappy camcorder mic. And or we're bent over, heaving and vomiting. Yeah, it was a workout. <laughs> I'm like oh, an athletic yeah. person, and I was like, "This is a this is a yes. solid workout." Yeah, fighting is like I have I no think idea. One of the most like intense workouts I've ever experienced. Like in a real fight. They only last like not even a minute because right. both people are just exerting so much that by the end you're like, okay, we're just both too tired to continue. <laughs> so that's like, I mean, we train for that. Like you have to be able to build up that endurance um, right. in order to keep fighting literally however long you need to keep fighting in order to be safe. Right. So, I mean, we'll have like five minute rounds, like as you get up into the upper levels god damn that seems like such a long time yeah five Five minutes of of straight like extreme exertion yeah that's a that's a good that's a good old like blue belt test for you it's just you do like five five minute rounds five or six that's a lot five minute rounds and like mitt rounds so you'll be punching and kicking oh my god and then the final drill for like a blue test will be a five minute um, you know, you just have like six people around you and they're all just attacking you. Yeah. With jokes, bear hugs, headlocks. They tell you to get on the ground and they mount you. Um, all that good shit. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, even. That's something else that you wrote about on Medium. I remember that. Oh, me? Yeah. When I wrote about um, my belt test? Yeah. Yeah. And just getting dogpiled by like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. That's well, the, uh, even just Ben standing over me with a pad, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's on there somewhere. And I had to, like, brace, like, the pad, and I could only hit with one hand because, like, oh, I didn't. Oh, that's right, because we, oh. um, we did the drill. You go down to your knees yep. and then on your back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's that a was, great drill. Freaked me out, man. Yeah, because getting up off the ground, like, once you get to the ground, it's, it's a whole other game because ground fighting is so fucking oh my hard God. like jujitsu i don't know how they do it um so yeah getting up off the ground is like yeah. that's a great drill for that because you're just getting up and down so frequently it tires you out um general mosh has a question and it says um if it's a nose hold barred anything goes to style of self-defense why do they need instructors all the footage is knees to guts uh what looks like frantic flailing, flailing at a pad <laughs> <laughs> um Oh, do she text, but it's and also Ben and I dancing, as you can see. We're like, <laughs> yeah. this is like when we went dancing. So yeah, okay, that's a good question. Um, it looks like frantic flailing, be um, because this is a all levels class, so a lot of 
the people here are doing your trial. We actually had like five or six yeah. trials. Yeah. So these are the first time, like this is the first time that a lot of these people are even throwing a punch. Um, but some of them are more experienced, have been coming for a couple years, so they have like a little bit more control over their own body, so it's less flaily. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the instructors, like if you know, you're asking if it's a no holes barred kind of thing, anything goes. Um, like the primary purpose of like, um, so the creator of Krav Maga, his name is Emi and he was this Israeli, Israeli guy. And he kind of noticed that a lot of the, um, self-defense techniques that they were teaching, like in the Israeli military. And I'm, I'm pretty like, you guys can look this up and let me know if I'm wrong. But from what, I, what I've read, it was like. He wanted it to be more efficient and, uh, like, more brutal. So, you know, what's the fastest way that I can debilitate this person in order to run away? And so what we teach are techniques um, that use your instinctual responses and sometimes, like, not your instinctual responses. Right. Like, you're going to want to do this, but you, we are here to retrain your body to do this instead. Um, like the muscle memory, like, so that you know what to do. Exactly. Some people freeze up when they're threatened. Some people, right. Yeah. Some yeah. people will make the wrong move. There was explained to us about like how to grab someone's face. Mm-hmm. Like you don't put your finger in close to their mouth because yeah. they will bite you and then your hand exactly. is useless. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we're there like for safety purposes and we're there to teach you the, um, most efficient techniques and the safest techniques to, defend yourself mm-hmm. um yeah and even the the instructor eric like that what uh, i think general Mosh is is seeing as flailing which yeah kind of is but uh the, <laughs> those like flailing. hammer blows to mm-hmm. the pad he straight up said like if you think of what have you been doing since you were a baby if a baby throws he a tantrum yeah he he's not doing a straight punch right. that, it's like, yeah, yeah it's you're here. doing yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, if you think about it, like in Taekwondo, I had to learn how to throw a punch and you'll know, keep your wrist straight so you don't mm-hmm. you know break your wrist yep. and hit with the first two, two knuckles, knuckles first uh-huh. and all that stuff. You don't have to teach that with like this motion is very yeah. natural. Everybody yep. knows how to do it. Exactly. And I was even um, in a class yesterday helping teach another all levels class and we were talking about bear hugs from the front or it was from... I can't remember. They're the same. Um, but when you are getting bear hugged, you like your natural response is going to want to be to just drop to the ground. Cause mm-hmm. that's what you do again when you're a kid. Yep. And you're, like, you know, trying to get your, you're like going to get to your kid and like trying to pick them up and they're 20 pounds, but suddenly they feel like 60 <laughs> and they can't get up. You can't pick them up because they're like Ugh. dead weight. Yeah. And they know to do that just instinctually. So when you're getting bear hugged, we use that same instinct, just drop your weight, just let it down. And it becomes much harder to, for somebody to pick you up and take them into their van or their <laughs> whatever, you know, and, um, well, and that throw you the to the ground. difference between someone carrying you off and, like, not being able to. Yeah, exactly. No, it makes perfect sense to me. I was a probation officer, and we had to learn what? before they made us. Did you not know no, that No, I did me? not know that. <laughs> <laughs> I was a probation officer. Wow. I know. Um, long a lifetime ago. Anyway, but we had to learn stuff like um, self defense stuff. Like you never leave a primary location with somebody. Like you always nah, fight. Nah, 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 sister. You're <laughs> you not all... taking me to no secondary <laughs> exactly. location. <laughs> right. Um, and all the odds. Like, but your instinct might be, oh, well, if I go with this guy, then maybe he won't hurt me. But no, uh-huh. you're much more likely to survive whatever fighting you do yes. against the person. Yeah. Than if you like try to be compliant and leave. Right. So stuff like that, like how to get out of the chunk of a car, which you wouldn't know how to do. Right. Um, and this seems right up the same alley because I don't know how many ladies we have in the um, chat today, but there was some, and I, I told both these, it's, there was some of the like, the chokehold attack yeah. that like triggered something really um, emotional in me. Like it's, yeah. it scared me. Like it freaked me out. Yeah. Um, and it's good to to work on those things because I can imagine if that happened to me in real life you just freeze up I would I wouldn't know what to do I would just be the penultimate victim I'd be like I don't know what to do yeah but if you train for it and you build up that sort of um, muscle memory then it'd be beneficial if that were to ever happen yeah and I think that happens 
I mean, that happens a lot to a lot of the women in the gym. Like, um, whether it's just, like, I mean, they, I mean, they might have, like, past, you know, trauma or experience right. or or not. Like, just being a woman and getting in there mm-hmm. um, brings up, like, a lot of your own, like, internalized fears. Yep. Like, even if you have no experience and nothing had ever, like, ever right. happened to you. Nothing ever happened to me on the street. Like, I didn't start Krav because, you know, I was approached on the street or I was followed or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just started it because, like, I think... I think every woman at least should know how to, like, get somebody to stop touching you if you don't want to be touched. So, like, I don't know. Yeah, it, it comes up. Um, it comes up for a lot of women in the gym. Yeah. It can I'm, be scary shit. Actually, I'm curious about that because I didn't even think about it until now. But, yeah, at the class that we went to, the, the gender ratios were, were pretty close to even. There might yeah. have been a few more guys than, than women. Is that yeah. pretty typical or would... Is Absolutely. That, okay. Yeah. At, at the gym, like I've talked to Derek about this, um, okay, our I gender ratio. Freaking out here, just FYI. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. It yeah. really scared me. Like, like something activated in my lizard brain. But anyway. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. The gender ratio is pretty much with like all of our members is pretty, is pretty 50 50. And the age ratio is like, or the age spectrum is mm-hmm. all, I mean, we have youth classes. So we have, like right. three-year-olds coming in <laughs> and they're like yeah. um and then we have like 80 year olds coming in and they're like yellow belts and orange belts and they're they just i don't know something at their end of their life like it's never too late um and Krav is designed to be for everybody gender age like race it doesn't matter um you know it works for everybody so yeah Men, women, I think men are, men are attracted to Krav just because, you know, it has a reputation for being like the macho, yeah, yeah. The fucking bare bones, martial art, Krav <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. so they'll come to classes and it's a great workout. So like, yeah, it doesn't matter your gender. It's going to work. It's that was my first experience. I went to a different gym. Like I think Tom recommended it to you around this. He was like, Hey, Emma does Krav. You should go try it. And I lived right. further out and there was a gym closer to me. So I showed up at like five 30 in the morning Yeah, and it was me and five, like six foot three plus dudes. Yeah. Um, which was something special. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Those <laughs> guys was... hit hard. Yeah. 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 And well, it's, it's... In your uh, in the Monkey in the Middle movie, that was definitely something that I noticed. As you know, there's the shot where the the main character is walking into the gym for the first time, and yeah. it's like ninety percent dudes. Dudes, and they're all like jock, like, yacked up, and like yeah. But I I noticed something. I don't know if it's something that you did intentionally, but there was one other woman character in the shot, and the camera kind of follows her. She's never like explicitly drawn attention to right. but she's she's kind of far in the background but because she's the other woman yeah like the eye is just drawn yeah. to her yeah no i didn't do that on purpose okay um, <laughs> i just like went in classes were happening and i was like okay here we go guys <laughs> let's do it um so i didn't like have any control over who was in the background of the shots i just like went in during a class because i wanted it to be like the most authentic mm-hmm. um version of the gym that um i could like i couldn't recreate that do they um, offer classes that are just women, or are they all co-ed like this? No, they not at the gym. We don't have any regular classes that are just women, but we do, like, a lot of our instructors will do uh, women's seminars, like women's self-defense seminars. They're, we've done, like, already we've done, a, like, a few this year. Like, we have one every other month at least. Yeah. Um, not necessarily, like, held at the gym, but we'll go to, like, like we've been to Comic-Con so many times and, like, um, like we go, we travel places like to ASU to do like women's self-defense seminars yeah. and we'll have them at the gym. Like we have one, the last one we did was for like, uh, rock climbers, mm-hmm. like association that was just women because a lot of these women were going out to like do their thing yep. and being attacked. And you know, when they're trying to climb rocks. Yeah. Um, so they were like, Hey, maybe <laughs> we great. should learn how to <laughs> you right. know, defend ourselves. God damn it. Um, so we have this women's self-defense seminar and those, like we're talking about getting emotional, those really fucking get emotional because it's all imagine. women and they all have never thrown a punch in their life. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of giggling and like laughing because yeah. it's, you know, it can be awkward. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it can work to laugh through your first, you know, I'm, oh, I'm hitting something. Um, 
But then, yeah, once we get to the self-defense aspect and we're grabbing each other and we're choking each other yeah. and we're getting on the ground, it like a lot of stuff can come out and kind of like, I can kind of get like kumbaya <laughs> and like, you know, people are, get emotional. But I mean, it's fantastic, especially, you know, if you're hesitant to come to a class um, where it's like with other men like I remember my first class Mm -hmm. I was partnered up with a dude yeah and the instructor came up to me and she knew it was my first class and she was like you know it's your first class did you want to partner up with a woman and I was Mm -hmm. like no I'm chilling yeah but like that's a it's a thing for sure um but we don't offer any like women's because we want to encourage women to come that makes sense and fight there's some men <laughs> <laughs> no and there's something to that that you're not being segregated for like um yeah body type because that's not what happens no out in the real world yeah, yeah. and like one of the main yes. principles of krav is that we always assume our attacker is bigger and stronger than us always always, always. it doesn't matter if you're training with somebody who is <laughs> 20 pounds lighter and a foot shorter than you which happens to me a lot um, but <laughs> like you always just assume that your attacker is going to be 50 pounds heavier and two feet taller and know what they're doing. Um, yeah. well, makes sense. You want to train for the worst case scenario. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah it's kind of like if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, Joanna says gyms are intimidating and it makes me think of Bo Burnham. Like, do you ever hear where he's like, I don't go to the gym cause I'm self-conscious about my body and I'm self-conscious about my body cause I don't go to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> like you just have to do it a yeah. few times. Yeah. Yeah. So. Even I'm intimidated by the gym. Like if I go to the gym, I won't really touch weights. <laughs> I'll just like head to the treadmill, treadmill. or hit the heavy bag. Cause yeah. that's, like, I know what I'm doing there, but yeah. Yeah, gyms are, I don't like I agree. (laughs) Um, Ben, this is a good question. And the first time they, um, in this class, Mm -hmm. they brought out a bag and they're like, okay, knees. And I'm like, I'm going to knee Ben Ben in the balls and castrate him, which is going (laughs) to suck because I know how much he wants to be a dad. (laughs) (laughs) And so the question is, is it scary having knees flying at your crotch like that? That's the question for you. Um, You know, now, now that you... Put it that way, it feels like it should be, but I can't say it was. Okay. Yeah. I really? Know. It didn't scare you because I really thought it was because I'm kind of longer and I'm like, my knee's going to go right past this bag. I mean, and it was you can, you can ask yourself the same question. I mean, have you ever been hit in the crotch? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay. It's I've gotten a good tip for, punch. Like, I mean, obviously it's nothing compared to men, but it's not pl- <laughs> Yeah, for well. one either. <laughs> and like even you can you can reverse that and be like were you scared to hold a pad for mm-hmm. Ben punching you because mm-hmm. obviously Ben's stronger than you oh yes um, Ben kicked for the record <laughs> I've been going around telling everyone this <laughs> I texted Tom like right out of class I'm like Ben just kicked my ass <laughs> and it's on video <laughs> so a little different yeah. than the dancing yeah no I got my ass kicked yeah yeah and so, it was scary yeah it can be it can be scary to hold the pad a lot, but you just kind of have to um, trust in your partner and you know communicate with them. Like um, if I'm with a soup, I was with, oh my god, I was partnered up yesterday with Crushed. this guy who um, when when uh, we were like braked, yeah. he went over to the heavy bags and broke it. Like he was oh. punching it and it fell. Oh no! That's how tall and muscular this man was, and I was partnered Yeesh. with him. So you just have to, like, communicate with him. Obviously, they can see that, you know, you're smaller or yeah. weaker or whatever. Right. Um, so you're going to be like, hey, go for speed, not power. <laughs> yeah. Focus on fast punches and not hard ones, yeah. just for my sake. Um, c- or focus on the technique. Like, really perfect your punches at this point, since you're yeah. partnered with a smaller person. Um, and also, like, as instructors, we're there to make sure everything everybody is safe and so if we see like if you were really going at ben's crotch we'd probably <laughs> maybe split you up like <laughs> or would be like hey ben amanda really knows what she's doing or um you know she's tending to you know go a little low so maybe hold the pad a little lower <laughs> really you know bring the impact like out meet her attack um I don't know. We, we try to keep everybody safe. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. But a little challenge is good, too. And, yes, yeah. he did go to town on it. Yeah. Our very I first mean, thing was, like, it was, like, a little slap fight, right? Yeah. And I didn't see any, like, 
video of that on here, but holy shit. I was like, oh, he's not playing. He's he's doing it. Like, yeah. I looked down, and I had, like, a, a handprint on my arm. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> See, that's, All right. I, I get I get competitive about stuff like that. Yeah. And it's and that, like, I thought that was a, a brilliant way to, to open the class because, you know, we've been talking about how – you know, other martial arts, yeah, that's a sport. It's, you know, it's artificial. And and this was, but yeah. that, you know, started things off on a fun note. Um, the yeah. shoulder tag? Yeah, 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 shoulder tag, they called it. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, you know, you get into a little fighting stance and you're trying yeah. to touch the other person's shoulder yep. and you're trying to block them. And, yeah, the whole yeah. purpose of that is just, like, get used to touching. Mm-hmm. You're touching, you're moving, you're, like, it's sparring, but you're not punching each other. Right. Um. Yeah, that's, it's a great way to start. It was super. Class. Cha- it was challenging. It was challenging right off the bat. I'm like, okay, so this is what You're we're doing. You're working your brain. Yeah. 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 And I, I didn't feel like I was like going to town or anything, <laughs> but it wasn't just you. Or, One yeah. of the other. Uh, women in the group says, oh man, you're really aggressive. And then made sure to say, but I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't, you know, made sure I understood she wasn't criticizing me, just making an observation. Yeah. She totally could have like, hey, you are being too aggressive, but that was not what she was trying to say to me. Right. And I mean, it can like, when you get in the gym and there's like level four, five, and six happening on the other mat and they're like swinging sticks at each other. I was going to say, are those the ones with like the... The sticks. Yeah, and the, they're doing baseball bat defenses and yeah. stuff like that. It mm-hmm. sets like a mindset. Like you're there to that. work. You're not there to mess around. Yeah. Like that kind of, it, it can bring out the aggression a little bit more just like by, by being in the atmosphere of the gym with the other classes happening. That scared me. And also your partners. Like they can, if they're, you tend to match the level of aggression that they're bringing. So. Yeah, if you see somebody like um, Again, right Chase, who's walking around with like the black curly hair, he's an orange belt, so he really knows what he's doing. Oh yeah, he knows how to bring out the aggression. Mm-hmm. You can you match it because um, you don't you're not you're there to learn and you're there to right. get aggressive. It's a pretty good challenge though too. But when our class was over, I looked at over the other mat and there they were in a circle and there were like two people in the middle. Yeah, and. They had sticks, and I was like, "Holy fucking shit, Emma! <laughs> like, <laughs> where the hell are we?" Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then it like freaked. I was like, "I could never do that. I could never do." Was like my yeah. response. Like, I could never do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's like I think that's the main attraction about Krav is the weapons defense. Like when mm-hmm. we go to Comic Con and we go to conventions and expos and shit like that, we have booths. People come up, be like, "Hey, can you show me how to defend the?" a knife like somebody pulls a <laughs> knife on you and they're doing yeah. this like can you, you can, and we're like okay um so people really love the weapons defense side and yeah. because i mean like hollywood and video games and yeah. the fantasy like you're gonna want to know i mean and real life like yeah. people more often than not are gonna want to attack you with a weapon um so yeah once you reach um yellow belt you can start going to the weapons defense classes so i've learned how to defend like handguns knives oh baseball gosh. bats um or on. other blunt objects um and things so, like that i'm curious sort of off topic <laughs> yeah totally nerdy yes yeah. some some folks in the chat might also be giant bomb fans and they have a it's one of those like meme arguments like pirates versus ninjas oh boy they they are constantly debating Against an opponent of similar size, weight, strength, aggression. <laughs> yeah. Come on. The other guy gets a baseball bat. Right. Or a knife. And you get a baseball bat or a knife. You get to choose knife versus bat or bat versus knife. And then I saw them as we were walking out. They were doing bat versus knife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Um, they were oh, doing God. that to, uh, yesterday, too. I'm they were I doing blunt object mm-hmm. versus a knife. So um, the... Are, like they were wearing their um, boxing gloves and mm-hmm. holding the knife in the boxing glove and their partner had the stick mm-hmm. and you know someone's coming at you with a knife you just hit <laughs> you just hit their hand with your stick like you yeah. have a stick you know like neutralize the threat and then finish them off and get away like i would i would probably go baseball bat go baseball bat yeah okay the yeah, pro tip Emma says baseball go bat. baseball bat guys <laughs> <laughs> it's longer you can get more range or a sword if you have a sword, yeah. <laughs> that's a different. I mean, that's that's, different that's the best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. That's good call, sweetie. Basically, it's, either a very long knife or yeah. a very sharp baseball exactly. bat, whichever way exactly. you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. 
So yeah, do we have any? Yeah, questions. Any any more questions from from chat there? Oh, crap, my God. Doesn't yeah about Krav Maga or about other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes we talk about other things. I like that. Just joined and stumbled into crotch talk. <laughs> yeah, well, it's uh, part of the part of the interesting fun thing about Twitch streaming is that people you know hop in at all times, <laughs> so you cannot ever assume that. Well, we just talked about that. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But <laughs> it's also kind of like joining your first craft class. You just like show up. And your instructor's like, all right, we're doing dick kicks. Or whatever. Dick kicks. <laughs> oh, no. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I feel like there's, I don't think we have a shortage of crotch, crotch talk on our stream. I, I feel like in one context or another, it, if, it comes if anything, up. it tends to come back to crotch talk. <laughs> yeah. Hi, sweetie. How are you? All right. Yeah, well, are you, we we sort of talked in, in vague terms after the class about whether you're thinking of going back. Well, I know that I took um, three of my kids mm -hmm. <laughs> with me who sat very nicely on the sidelines, but one of them in particular, and it's super funny because she's my, like, teeny, teeny, tiny, super, twig. like, yeah, yeah, she's a little, like, you could... The wind blows, knock her over. Um, and she was like, I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to yeah. do it. Uh -huh. She even, like, when Ben and I came out to get water, she was like, you want me to go back in for you? And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> so I would love to um, have my kids go in and take a trial. And, yeah, I, it's something I'd be interested in doing. It's a, it's the kind of challenge that it scares me, so I know I need to do it. Yep. Yeah. Um. I did talk to hey, Eric after about like family plans, and yeah. he was like, "Yeah, we can oh. work something out." So you should call him. I will and be like, "Cause I with got kids, four of us. That's a lot. Oh yeah, everything, everything in my life is times four. So yeah. Um. Anyway, surprise so child. Asked, yes. How many years would it take to go from white belt to black belt? Which That's is a, good, a question. good question. It took. I just found this out the other day. It took my chief instructor. 12 years to go from a white belt to a black belt sounds about right when we yeah. um we just had two <laughs> people belt. test for their black belt and they mm -hmm. have been doing crop for six years so i think the fastest um somebody that i know has gone from a white belt to a black belt has been like five or six years um but there's like no timeline. It's literally whenever you think you're ready to test and when you your instructors think you're ready. So um, that door. I'm telling you. She's crawling around. Yeah, she is. Um you'll stay in white belt for like six months. It's yeah. not you just gotta get the basics down and then you can go on and oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. It's continue. empty. It's empty. It's empty. Okay, I'm sorry. We're good. <laughs> that was my fault. Continue. I thought I'd like pull um, <laughs> And then, yeah, once you start getting up into, like, um, orange, green, and blue, you stay there for at least a year <laughs> to two years. Um, focus, AJ. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> the kid is here. It's hard. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's some dedication for sure. Um, like, if you do karate or, like, I don't know how it works in taekwondo – but you can, like, move to black belt pretty quickly. Yeah, I, um, I did it for a couple of years in high school, and I got to black, black. belt. And did you really? Yeah. yeah. You were a black belt in taekwondo. Well, that's the thing. It sounds all impressive when you say it like that. I, right. Hindsight being twenty twenty, I think I was doing pretend toy taekwondo for babies. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. It, it it didn't feel meaningful. Right. It didn't feel like I'd actually accomplished much when I got to black belt. Just like, yeah, I've been... I've been going to the classes for long enough yeah. and that you just kind of like get kicked up and ranked to keep right. you coming back. Right. Kind of like kids in, kids in the education system. Like, I don't care if they can't read. We'll just advance them into the fourth grade. Yeah. Right. Like you, you stick around exactly. for long enough and you go through the motions and right. you will eventually gotcha. get promoted. Yeah. And I assume your gym's not like that. Oh, no. They're like, no, yeah. you fail. Yeah. Um, yeah. They really make you earn it <laughs> is, is how we talk about it we like we are here to make you feel like you have earned your black belt um and we actually just had a black belt belt ceremony like last week and Derek talked you know about what it means to be a black belt in Krav Maga and he talked about the difference between other martial arts and this one and we kind of mm. keep that um like wow you're a black belt kind yeah of, like mentality and um 
yeah, it's a two day test and you go out and you tra- have to travel, you know, travel to wherever LA or whatever. And they, they make you work. Your, your rests are not water breaks. They are run down to the street and come back and Holy then shit. hit more things. Oh my God. Um, and also you defend real knives. And so it's like, um, yeah, they make you, they make <laughs> you work for it. Um, it takes, it takes a long time. Well, it's... the conventional wisdom is 10,000 hours to be an expert in anything, yes. you know? So yeah. Sounds like it's in the same ballpark. Yeah. And then even after that, you can do second degree black belt, third degree black belt. Like, I think, I think that was a question, right? Nine. Is there, yeah. are there ranks above, above black, black belt? belt? Yeah. So I think it goes up to ninth. You can Seventh. get, you can be a ninth degree Jesus. black belt. And Krav. Um, and that's like, you go to fucking Israel and you, like, <laughs> and you fight on the street. <laughs> <laughs> you join the military there. No. Um, Jesus. But yeah, there are. And my chief instructor is a third degree. You just got a Is third. that Derek? Mm-hmm. Or is that Eric? Derek is Eric. a third degree. What is Eric? Eric is a green belt. Oh. So that is right above me. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. So it goes uh, white, yellow, orange, green, blue, brown, black. And then all the degrees above black. It's not something I ever considered doing, and I'm so glad I did it. Yeah. So if you have a gym by you that has a free trial class, do it. Yeah, go do, do it, it. and free. tell us how it goes. Yeah. yeah, it is free. Give us a little book report to do one. Are yeah. you are you thinking of doing it? Yeah, well, that's one of the reasons why I asked because I'm like trying to trying to weigh my options between because I I really like the gym and the environment. It's just, you know, it's it's actually not as bad a commute as I thought it would be. Like that class was basically rush hour and it was still only like a 25 minute drive you're driving the right way in rush hour like and then by the time it's over you're good to go home yeah Yeah. so i'm I'm trying to decide between between that gym or trying to find one closer Mm. i did try the one closer you'll find one on and it's either in chandler or gilbert Mm -hmm. and i i don't know i just didn't connect with it the same way Mm -hmm. yeah i'm curious i'm kind of curious about like um the other krav maga gyms like Mm -hmm. do you know um, was it just Krav Maga? Or did they do other? They also had kickboxing. Okay, but it was Krav. It was, but that's I it. Think Krav was in the name. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've only it had ever... a different feel from the class. That yeah, I was in. I've only ever gone to EVKM, so like I'm always like I don't know, kind of fascinated about what goes on at other gyms, especially ones that aren't part of the Krav Maga Alliance, which is, like, the overarching, like, Krav Maga... Organization. Organization that runs um, my gym. Yeah. Um, even, like, uh, Eric, who taught this class, came from Krav Maga Detroit, and he said, which is part of the Alliance, and he said it's a totally different feel. Like, they're, like, more military over there. Oh. Um, you know, where the... They're screaming, like, one, two, get down on the ground. Like, kind of, like... Um, I don't know. I don't know how to put it, but like <laughs> the the vibe is way different. And at EBKM, it feels more like a more like a community, more like a family. Like we're here for each other, with each other, and like helping each other. Um, whereas like at Crime God Detroit, they're like, let's get to work and leap. <laughs> what do they call that? Like not like boot camp, like like boot camp. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like drill instructor. Yes, like a drill sergeant. Yeah, Yeah. drill sergeant. That's the one. Yeah, so if you go and end up like going to another gym, let me know how it goes because it could be a whole different vibe. The one I went to when I had the like six foot three plus guys and me. Yeah. Yeah. uh, And they even changed the music because they had like warm up music. It was like, fuck that bitch. And I was like, "Ah." I didn't say a word, but he just went over. He's like, oh, I'm going to play a different (laughs) one this time. I was like, don't. Don't do the misogynistic music. <laughs> but um, anyway, they were all like they were getting ready for work, and like at least three of them had like were law enforcement or some sort of right, you know, firefighters and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, people, um, a lot of the people here like don't have any background of any kind, and they're just like I'm here to to learn. Or actually, a lot of them. A lot of the EVKM students are ASU students. Yeah, and, like, I saw a lot of ASU wear. Yeah, and so like, um, like their parents will be like, "You should go." Like they're going off to college, and the parents are like, "You gotta go try one of these EVKM classes." Yeah. Or they'll just do it on like on their own time. They'll be like, "You know what? I'm a college student now. 
I'm going to be out there alone in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go learn how to defend myself. That seems smart. It's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, there's the whole theory of like, we shouldn't have to worry about being like street harassed and we shouldn't have to. Okay, so you can live in the like yeah well when, yeah right once, like once what get, should be and we yeah. could live in what is right yeah once once we get there and we're all living in star trek land then yeah then we won't have to worry about that but in the meantime right in the meantime maybe learn how to yeah like i I, sh- I shouldn't have again. to have a lock on my door but i do <laughs> right <laughs> or on my so car or yeah. yeah yeah exactly like, like you can live in the world the way it is or the way you should be and then complain about it the family that kicks crotches together stays together. Is that true? Is housing so? <laughs> it is so nice. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is true. I think the crotch kick is underrated. I was impressed. <laughs> it is a. It's a powerful. It's a thing. go-to. It's a powerful, powerful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we were doing. Uh, the, the the stomach uh, right I mean you can knee somebody in the crotch yeah. that is the beautiful thing about knees is you can go for the crotch you can go for the gut break some ribs or you can go for the head the head just bring just it down bring your fucking grab the hair and just bring it right into your knee classic love doing that lord <laughs> so I noticed I I tend to get nauseous when I do strenuous exercise and I was starting to starting to do that I was yeah. like oh man am I gonna have to like back out of this and and like take yeah. a seat and let that pass mm-hmm. and I was worried because right when I was starting to feel that was when we started doing the the stomach <laughs> knees like is this gonna make it worse I think it made it better oh really I think like because you know I'm like clenching my stomach yeah. to like in anticipation I think that actually helped yeah. Oh, oh Ben, sweet. if you'd have barfed on me, it would have been okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bring us closer together. <laughs> Doing so many things together, we could barf and it would. I'm glad okay. that uh, we did headlock from the side in that class. We know that's not often teached. We did what? Headlock from the side. Okay. Um, somebody's coming up from the side and trying to bring you down to the ground, or like. It felt very real. It felt like somebody could come up and do that to me, like yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Um, we don't often, we should do wrist releases more often, but. Um, oh, because some, I have had like. Oh, people grab you grab all the time. Me. Yeah. Because it's like, it can be a very non threatening thing. And like, for somebody who's touchy, like, they're just like, oh, <laughs> like, let right. me just, you know, touch your arm. But, you know, if you're not cool with that learn how to get away and you can you can make it an aggressive thing where you're like hey man that's not cool like don't touch me or it can just be like something that they don't even notice yeah um that's just like neutralizing a threat like that is well it's one of those examples of i think like if someone if ben grabbed my wrist my instinct would be to like pull like this and that's not gonna get me he's yeah that's one of the ones that um we teach that kind of goes against your sort of like instincts Yeah. yeah a lot of like a lot of um, what we do in Krav, like we practice going towards your attacker and attacking them rather than like if you're being pulled or like grabbed your grab, whether it's like by the neck, the hair, the Ugh. arm, like your reaction is going to be to, you know, get away, get away from this person. But we have to retrain your muscles and your brain. No, go towards the person while you're at it, hit him in the crotch kind of thing. Yeah. Um, or, like, hit him in the face. Like, go towards your attacker. Take him to the ground. Like, Well, and my instinct is to be a pacifist. I don't know where I got it from. Like, I, I don't know. I don't like the idea of, like, hitting people. I thought yeah. about it. I'm like, if someone's attacking me, I've heard people, like, go for their eyes. I'm like, I... I'm tr- <laughs> Even if, like, someone's threatening my life, I cannot imagine being able to, like... Gouge their eyes out. Ah, yeah. Like, is that, like, what's wrong with me that I'm so, like... I can't, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I've, I've heard other women say that too. Like, even if someone's like wailing on me, I can't imagine like hurting them. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you got to get over that. Yeah. yeah, definitely do. Yeah. I mean, I guess if it's like a fight or flight response, maybe you just lean more towards the flight. Yeah. Maybe. That but, makes sense. Well, and they say it's not actually fight or flight. It's it's fight, flight, or what's freeze. the third one? Yeah, freeze. Oh, freeze. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's probably be a common one. Um, I read a book about that called The Polyvagal Theory, and it talks about the two different 
responses to stress and fight or flight is one Mm -hmm. and then freeze is like a more lizard brain like when you see an animal play dead Mm -hmm. in the jaws of another animal yeah that's the freeze response like yeah yeah dang how okay so zodiac is saying polyvagal i'm sorry uh (laughs) (laughs) multiple bagels uh yeah polyvagal theory so how do you like how can aj get her respect oh um do we have room to oh here let me yeah do a little quick kick it so there's a couple of diff like uh wrist release techniques it's just depending on um where the person's grabbing you but mm-hmm. the like it's all the same idea okay. so what you're going to want to do with a wrist release is take your like the strongest part of your forearm which is right here this the blade of your arm Mm -hmm. and attack the weakest part of their grip which is going to be where their index finger meets their thumb and just that's how you get out you just attack it so if i'm grabbing you Mm -hmm. here same side arm Mm -hmm. you're going to want to take the blade of your arm to the, the weakest point of my grip which is there where my thumb like where this opening is yeah and then you're just going to want to bring your elbow to my elbow so don't go back come forward like this yes okay so if you grab mine like that i'm blading Mm -hmm. to leverage the opening yeah and then i'm just bringing it oh yeah my grip just went like yeah it's just it's you're just leveraging the person so do that again on mine Uh so i go like this and then so not out okay right now your blade is is already there so don't twist it this way okay because you're like now i'm using it harder yeah so stay there stay here and then yeah. yeah, it just slips right through. Yeah. And it's the same for, like, opposite side. Mm-hmm. You're just going to... So I would go yeah. this way and then... And then hitchhike out. It's like oh. A... So that the works. idea is just to leverage the grip using the blade of your forearm and getting away. And that can be, like, a total... Like, people won't even notice. Yeah. Like, if they're just like, oh, hey, I don't you just think... feel like... Yeah, I just... And they won't even notice that you're there. You're neutralizing the threat. You don't want to be touched. Like, it's a total normal thing. It can also be a more aggressive thing. Somebody's dragging you pulling you somewhere you're gonna want to go with them right that was one thing and you um, can feel it like you, i can feel where that weak point is when i'm tr- like yeah. i don't have to look I'm yeah like, yeah okay. and yeah. it's just the idea is not to struggle but like what's the best way to leverage this person's grip you know, i'm gonna use the blade of my forearm yeah um because that's just gonna open it right up and again my instinct would have been to like pull this way which yeah. is not yeah then and i'm you're gonna want to be like oh yeah like that's just gonna because the person's stronger than you, right. that's not going to release the grip at all. That makes sense. Um, it was like uh, what Eric said when we when we guys were doing um, headlock from the side, where like this person's trying to bring you down at five miles per hour, you want to step at six miles per hour. Mm-hmm. So it's like get ahead that of that kind of like going towards the person, attacking the person faster and stronger than they are attacking you, kind of thing. Yeah, and at least for me, that's not instinctual. That's not what I would do. I would be yeah. like run right away. It's like a Chinese yeah. finger trap thing where you don't want to pull yes, against it. Exactly. You, yeah. you need to go with it. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm, Polly bagel. I love that. <laughs> Polly <laughs> bagel. Poppy, sesame, and onion. All onions. the bagels. Yeah. yeah I, it's it's interesting to hear from, from you and, and that other person that I was being very aggressive. I didn't feel like I was because I've been doing the dance classes just about every week where it's... The, the idea is to have a lot of close physical t- contact with another person right. in such a way as to not be threatening or aggressive mm-hmm. so that everybody feels super comfortable. It was tough for me to like get into that other mindset of, no, I'm attacking you. I should be threatening and aggressive so that yeah. you can learn how to, exactly. how to deal with yeah. that. Yeah, that's the other thing about um, like starting Krav is that you don't want to attack people like i had people (laughs) i had people yesterday when we were doing bear hugs who weren't even like wrapping their arms like the whole thing of a bear hug is this person's getting their hips close to your hips they're wrapping their arms around you they're picking you up and taking you somewhere and you know we had men and women alike who were just kind of like and like keeping this Mm -hmm. much distance between their bodies like because i don't want to hurt you or whatever yeah and they would do the defense and i'm like the defense looks great amp up the aggression like let's right. get more aggressive let's really attack each other now because you know when we get out there this person's not gonna be like Haha, i'm gonna pick i'm gonna take you into my van now and take you to a secondary <laughs> do location you go? <laughs> do you want to go let's go no they're gonna they're gonna really go for it so i was like 
be a good attacker, be a good partner so that your partner really gets the feel and sense and the muscle training of actually defending themselves. Yeah. Right. Oh. So that's like another good way. Like not only like are you learning to defend yourself and counterattack um, and getting over that like, oh my God, this person is harming me. I need to like do something. But you're also like literally practicing attacking somebody as if you were the like the perpetrator, like the person actually, right. oh, I want to take this person away kind of thing. Which you don't really Mm-mm, don't get a lot doing. of well yeah. most of us don't yeah. have a lot of experience with that right right yeah. might be might be good though like going back and forth between between Krav and dancing and learning how to how to flip that switch that is mm-hmm. interesting and be you that. know yeah either aggressive or non aggressive at will right yeah like because you know it's something I think it's something that that men have trouble with and aren't really taught very well is how to. How to not be, the... yeah. How to not be aggressive and learning mm-hmm. how to how to turn that on and off. Yeah, you know, it's it's something that men have problems with is coming across as aggressive when it's not their intention. Right. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, and that's that's something that the the dance class that I goes to that I goes to that I goes to dance class right after I eat my spinach. <laughs> 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 but that's something that they focus on is is. Doing, you know, doing this, that, and the other that is that is very aggressive, that is threatening. Don't do that. Do this. Uh-huh. And yeah. then you go to Krav and the, your partner's like, you're so aggressive, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 it's accepted. They're there for that. Well, and then for me, in either direction, it's like exposure therapy for a fear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know. Oh, my God. I remember the first time I got punched. Ooh. It's like. Good um, story. Tell it. I mean, so many fights end so quickly just because nobody's. Been, have you ever been punched in the face? Uh, maybe. Have you ever been punched? Has either I'm, of you ever been I'm punched sure in the face? I'm sure I must By my have great been. Dane. <laughs> it wasn't intentional, but By I did a, get a black eye. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. She she wailed on me. But anyway, go ahead. I feel like a lot of people in their adult life, like maybe <laughs> when you're kids, you're like, meh, with their siblings. Yeah. In their adult life, never really been punched in the face by another grown adult. And so fights will just end. Like, you can watch videos on YouTube of, like, street fights, things like that. You throw one haymaker to the face, the person's down and they're out because they're like, whoa. That's it, yeah. What just happened? And so, like, part of that retraining, <laughs> like, your brain, puppy punch. <laughs> hey, you've been punched in the face. 120 pound um, puppy punch, but yeah. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> um, it's just, like, literally you're practicing getting punched. So, like, when you go, we have, like, fight class at Krav, which is just sparring. You put on all your gear, and you just hit people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There's no, like, that's really, like... Oh, God. That's, like... It gives me anxiety just thinking about it. Like, I'm having, like, a physical, like... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you can start going to fight class once you, like, reach level two. I didn't go until, like, reached level three because I was just so anxious. I didn't want to, like, go anywhere near because you're... I mean, these people... Anyway, um, so, like, when I did finally go and, like, had the cojones to show up, I put on my headgear and, like, I'm sparring with this person and they just boop. Like, it was not, it's not even a hard punch. It's, like, and they're wearing a glove and you're wearing your headgear and your mouth guard and you just, like, oh. Kind of stuns you. You're, like, like, stun you a little bit. I just got punched in the face. It absolutely is stunning. But then, like, you know, two or three more times, you're, like, oh, yeah. God damn it. (laughs) Good job. (laughs) You get punched. So, it's, like... I don't know. It's like part of that. You're just doing shit that you're not used to. Yeah. It's good exposure. Yeah. It seems to me. And you're learning the things. Yeah. So you can walk in peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's nice. Well, I hope you keep up with it, Ben, because like I was impressed. If we could just yeah. talk about Ben for a second, I was impressed. <laughs> and I told everyone, I was like, holy shit. Ben's got skills. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and I also describe it as it's like saying to someone, oh, wow, you've lost weight, which infers that like you were fat before. <laughs> and that wasn't it. Like when I'm like, holy shit, Ben, I'm surprised at how good you were, assuming I thought you would be terrible. <laughs> well, um, I mean, you didn't even know that I took Taekwondo 10 years ago. I did not. So f- from your point of reference, as right. far as you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Ben, Ben's ben got the, the fighting Cross skills. Too. What did I say? I was like, hmm, I would believe you've attacked somebody before. <laughs> <laughs> I would believe that, that you had experience at that. It's pretty funny. You're a natural at fighting. Mm. <laughs> right, he chimes in. Yeah, well, no, I had fun. And I'd, honestly, I've been just like 
for workout purposes, I've been looking for something because I've been mm-hmm. been doing my own thing. I've been doing the mace workouts, which Tom is very into. Yeah. And and that's been working fine. I've been swimming every other day. Good cardio. Yeah. Which which is fine, but I feel like I've kind of like plateaued at a certain point. Like, right. I'm doing what I'm doing and it's maintaining me where I'm at, which is fine. But I have found personally that maintaining is a dangerous thing because it's easy to trick myself into thinking I'm maintaining when in fact I'm backsliding. Right. Because it's not a challenge anymore. I'm not reaching for exactly. anything. Yeah. Stay challenged. Keep challenging yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that's I'm definitely important. in the best shape that I've been in like, since I like had a professional like trainer when like in middle school or something when mm-hmm. Tom was just like... I don't know if you're gonna get, he's gonna get you. Was a that for like trainer. softball? Yeah, it was yeah. like um, he had me and my brother go for like a baseball, softball, like uh, focused workouts. So they would like really strengthen the muscles that you use when you swing a bat, like those yeah. kind of things. Um, and I was in really good shape then, but like I didn't give a shit. I was in middle school. I was just like, yeah, I'm just going for fun. Like I don't really care what shape I'm in. And then I did swim in high school for a while, and I was really skinny then, but I wasn't strong. And then I and then I, I just stopped for a while, and then I'm, when I started doing crop again, back in the best shape of like my life. That's a, a good place good to workout. start because anytime you like, um, like Ben said, anytime you start to like accept the status quo, mm-hmm. it's like all downhill from there, oh, and yeah. it's harder to come back from. Right, like if you don't stay in shape. Yeah. So. True. Yeah, because yeah, we don't. You don't want to go getting old old lady yeah (laughs) all of 21 Mm. where else can you practice getting punched in the face um on the street or if you have an (laughs) older brother (laughs) certain neighborhoods you can probably get find yourself (laughs) probably make that happen Hmm. i'm good i'm glad you guys uh i'm glad you guys liked it and came out and tried it I did like it. I thought it was fun. I'd do it again because, again, there's still that, like, visceral, like, recoiling. Like, Like, that's a sign I should do it. I feel like five, six classes, like, the self-defense aspect won't, like, bother you anymore. You're going to, like, find yourself really doing damage, like, in your punches and your groin kicks. Like, everything's just going to get stronger. Like, can you picture yourself like that right now, like, really throwing an effective... Mm-mm. groin kick I don't think so yeah and you can like I don't know it takes yeah. like two no it's hard to even or... like watch myself I'm like Yeesh. yeah and see I didn't get that at all which conversely like makes me want to like well then clearly I need to keep doing it and find where that point is for right. me because I'm sure it exists yeah that point where it will make me uncomfortable we just didn't didn't find it in yeah. the first class right right yeah it's yeah. definitely a different points for everybody I was uncomfortable throwing knees the first time I did that, because I was like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Especially being that close to somebody like, yes. like you guys know each other. You do. Kind of like. Yeah. Um, but like I was with a complete stranger. I was like, okay, we're getting in now. Like groin kicks are easy because you're maintaining space. You're like, okay, I can do this. Right. But knees were uncomfortable. And then like once you get to like round kicks and like back kicks and fucking side kicks and it takes like an incredible amount of coordination. Mm. <laughs> it's like. That can, that can get uncomfortable. Uh, and also, like, the groundwork. Because, like, you're mounting a person. And uh, you've got your hands on the mounting. Throat, and Or, Yeesh. like, you've got them in a headlock and your entire weight is on them. Like, it, that can be, uh... That can be uncomfortable for some... That, that could be a threshold. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could see that. Yeah. Well, at that first gym I went to, I mean, the guy was straight up. Like, we did the class and he was, like, after my nose started pouring blood and I was covered in blood and I left right. covered in blood. And, um... That wasn't because he got hit, though. No, it was because (laughs) I don't even know. Like, I think my blood pressure just went through the roof when I was punching something for the first time. Yeah. Um, But then he was like, yeah, we do more stuff on the ground because, you know, obviously that's where you're going to get raped. Raped. And I'm like, just put it out there. Like, can we not? But, I mean, I get why he is that, like, frank about it. Yeah. It freaked me the fuck out. Yeah, some instructors are are very yeah. up front like just i mean especially when you're there and like Ooh. somebody's mounting you and you're practicing doing that i mean some instructors will just be frank and be like this is so you don't get raped um but some yeah. instructors are like more insensitive because like some people come in with experience like that right. so yeah. um they'll put it more gently <laughs> um 
and, and that's when trust and like your partner and your instructor really come into play but yeah i mean it's out there you can tell just like okay like i'm mounting you this is a situation that could go very badly very mm-hmm. quickly um yeah it's uh put it all out there on the line well i remember the first time i went to crab it was because um someone in my life was it was like feeling like I sort of had this scale. I'm like, oh, there's a 5% chance he could hurt me. That's a 10 And it had gotten mm. past, like, my. it was, like, over 15%. And I was, like, oh, I'm yeah. way past, like, my comfort threshold. Right. Um, and so in that respect, like, it made perfect sense. And I think I would imagine a lot of people come to Krav with that. Like, either something has happened or something yes. has changed in their life. Or somehow some sort of vulnerability has been exposed mm. that they want to get a handle yeah. on. When you go and sign up for your trial class, you guys didn't get to experience this because I think Eric had a lot of like trial people showing, and there's only like a certain sure. amount of time you can. And he know where you're. He knew we were your friends. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And what the whole deal with Krav is, but when you first sign up, you like fill out this piece of paper and you talk with the person um, who either like uh, the guy who I talked with isn't there anymore, and he wasn't an instructor, but he was like kind of like a manager. Um, or a co-manager and he's just like hey like why are you here do you know what Krav is like um and just kind of lets you speak freely like he doesn't they don't push you but um you know if you want to share you can and that way at least they can tell the instructor they would be like hey this person's coming in for a trial class they've got experience in this in this field or this in this trauma just be mindful um because I mean yeah I mean it's vulnerable. Do you feel like walking down the street now, like if you compare yourself to your the first time you were living on your own, and you're right. like, oh, maybe I want to do this. And now, like, right. how much more confident do you the, feel? That's actually an interesting question. It brings up kind of a cool story, which okay. I don't know if I told you guys, but I was followed Oh no. a couple months ago. Oh, in Phoenix? No. Yeah, in Tempe. Yeah. Um, so I was, it was during the gym's 45 day challenge. And part of the challenge was you had to do 60 minutes of a workout every day. And I think it was a Sunday and like the gyms were closed or I didn't make it to Krav um, that day. So I had to get my workout. And so I just like went for a walk and I went and I walked um, from my old apartment to a mountain Mm -hmm. and like hiked it up and then went down and then walked back. Just like down the mill. Yeah. Yeah. And then by, and by the time I was walking back, it was like, like 10 30 i want to say mm-hmm. um and i'm walking next to the lake in between the 202 and the lake which mm-hmm. is like not a great area right it's right next to the highway and it's loud and like right. very not safe um and like on the other side of the lake or on like, on the north Pop-a-go? side on the pop side okay. north side um if i was on the south side i feel like it would have been a little fine but i was yeah. literally right next to the north highway. of the freeway no, south of the freeway. Crab, okay, north of the literally the other between side of the, the lake where there's like nothing and, the, and the yeah, lake. like literally like the sidewalk. Got it. The highway. Yep. The lake. Got it. Um, and there was a man. There were people out, and it was like um, I don't know. It was a holiday of some sort. There were people out, mm-hmm. and maybe it was like the Fourth of July. I think okay. it was Fourth of July. Weekend. I remember you saying you're like oh, I'm gonna go take a run or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, um, anyway. And there was a guy, and he was, like, pushing a wheelchair, and he had, like, I think he, he was probably homeless. There's a lot of homeless and, people around there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he was just, like, kind of minding his own business, and, like, I think he, I think at that point he was, like, talking to himself. And there was another guy, like, with a camera taking pictures or whatever, and they had kind of talked. And I was on the phone. Like, I had my headphones in. I was talking on the phone. And I was just, like, I just walked by him. And he kind of, like, turns and says some stuff to me, like, calls me a dumb twit or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I just, like, keep walking. Right. And eventually he, like, he passes me. He, like, he continues to walk and passes me. And I'm just kind of, like, chilling behind him. And then, like, he does something again and I end up in front of him. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of, like, a long stretch um, back to where I need a turn to start getting back to my apartment under the bridge under the bridge Mm -hmm. um under the highway so like i'm walking and there's people around and i'm on the phone i'm just like having conversation but i'm like i'm aware of the guy so like i turn around and look and he's following me and i'm like okay he's either just like walking to where he needs to get or he's following me so i like I try a couple things, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go down here and he follows and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back up here and he follows. So I'm like, okay, this guy's 
this person's following me. Right. So I'm like, okay, there's like things, okay, what can I do? I can turn around and be like, stop fucking following me, you piece of shit. And I can like address him. Right. Um, I can run. Mm-hmm. I can just straight up call the cops or I can call my roommate and ask her to come pick me up, which is what I ended up doing. Mm-hmm. So like ultimately it was like a totally safe situation. It was just this guy very obviously like i was moving in ways that were not natural and like cutting across grass and things like that and he was following me um so in that instance kind of coming back to your question i did not feel ready to like address that person at all i did not feel ready to confront him attack him hurt him in any way which i feel like goes against a lot of like why i go to the gym and i Mm -hmm. feel like at that point i should feel ready but um if things came down to it, even if I didn't feel ready, like I feel like I've been doing this for two years, I probably have the muscle memory. Like I know that I'm capable of hurting him. If you were forced into the situation, you wouldn't yes. choose the situation. Obviously but if you were not. Forced no. into it, you would respond yes. better than you would two years ago. Yes, of course. And I know that I am like I am confident that I am capable of hurting the per of hurting that person. And it's funny because I texted. Or I, uh, the Tom was the first person the that I called after and I was just like after I got home and I just like left him a voicemail and I was like hey I'm safe I'm chilling I'm in my roommate's car just want you to know that somebody was following me uh I'm pretty fucking freaked out and yeah. I'm pretty scared and, and he texts me after and he's like you are capable of putting that person in the hospital. Like, yep. yep. You are a dangerous part. Like you do this for two years. You train for this reason. Um, if shit went down, like I am confident in you that, that you would have been able to handle it. Um, and I was like, damn. <laughs> um, but I believe that just watching you in the class, like your movements were very quick and you seemed like the muscle memory was there. You're like, yeah, oh, this is how you do. It. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, holy shit. And and part of that is, like, we do stress drills. We do monkey-in-the-middle drills because it, it amps up the stress. And when you're training in a class versus when you're out in the real world, it's way different levels of stress. So we try to, like, simulate that stress as best we can. But when you're under stress like that, it it's different. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because I, like, I messaged Derek, too. I was and, like a little bitch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I like talked about it in the 45, 45 day challenge, like Facebook post. I was like, yeah, it was, we had to do a daily update. Yeah. And that daily update was me going, Hey guys, uh, I was followed today. Like it was weird. And, um, <laughs> and it was funny cause everybody was like, Hey Emma, um, uh, self-defense starts by not putting yourself in, in situations like that. So, yeah. so maybe don't go out at 1030 at night alone yeah. again. And I was like, you know, right. like, I feel like part of me kind of gets overconfident sometimes. I'm like, I know Krav Maga. Like, I can go walk around alone in Tempe <laughs> right. at 11. But no, you right. know, you like you train Krav Maga. So you like you learn these things like, oh, maybe that's not the safest position to right. be like maybe next time i'll bring a buddy or yeah. i'll go in the morning or yeah. i'll right. go during the day like yeah i mean well, it's, my gut- it's not mutually exclusive taking you know common sense <sighs> steps to avoid putting yourself in a in a dangerous yeah. situation but at the same time yeah. you can't control everything you know right. maybe your I car know. breaks down maybe you, yeah exactly you, know. you can take all the same steps right and be and safe still. yeah and still wind up in a bad situation but like Right, self-defense, like, I had to remind myself self-defense starts by avoiding situations like that to the best of your ability. Right. Um, And, yeah, so I, like, I don't know how ready, quote-unquote, I would be to really, like, attack somebody when it came down to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was really scared, um, and I didn't feel ready. Yeah. Um, But, like... I know, like, I train for that. Like, it's, I don't know, I, it's I, a paradox. I, I, it's, I feel like framing it as you being ready is maybe I not know, the but... not the right way to frame it. It's not that yeah. you weren't ready. It's that you you chose a different option, which yeah. was to call your friend, and that was the right option for right. you at the time. Yeah. So it's, it's you, you had one more option than you would have had two years ago, which would have been confronting him, which exactly. you wouldn't have been. Yeah, but that's just a good point. You, yeah. Just because you had that option didn't make it, the correct option at the time yeah Yeah. exactly 
That yeah. makes sense. If you hadn't had a friend to call, if it hadn't, you know, if it had been oh God, a situation yeah. with fewer people around or yeah. you know, your phone had been dead or what oh. have you, mm-hmm. then then maybe confronting him would have been the right option. Exactly. Um, Bella, where to go? Uh, where to Bella go? Tala. Yeah, confronting him seems to me like the path, path with the, the most, most risk. risk. That makes sense, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Is that are you taught that? Like, should you avoid confrontation and then it's like a last resort, or do they teach you like to be immediately like, nope, confront? Like, is there? Yeah. So it's definitely the first path. Avoid confrontation, Avoid... but if you're forced into it, then yes. You can. Okay, yes. so it sounds like you did exactly what you were taught to do. Right. Yeah, okay. And that's the thing, like, you, Ben, what you were saying Bye. reminded me that, like, even if we take, like, the physical aspect of training in Krav Maga out, and we just talk about, like, we just think about, okay, Krav Maga is a martial art where you learn how to solve problems. Two years ago, if I was in that, um, you know, in that same situation, and, like, physically I could have you know done something but like I didn't know like I don't know training in Krav like brings a certain level of like calm and like serenity to just solving that problem like two years ago I would have been probably would have been freaking the fuck out I've been like oh my god I'll like call the police or call my dad or like yep done something and I don't know. It's, I can imagine uh, that feeling. I know that feeling of helplessness. Like, if something happens, I'm fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, there's, <laughs> if I can't run away from this, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to. Be oh, I would have been, I would have been so scared. Yeah. But, like, everything ended up fine. I called my roommate. Like, I solved that problem efficiently and, like, I'm safe. That's all that matters. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. That's a good story. Yeah, because yeah, it definitely made me think a lot about, like, um, why I train, what my training has done for me since I started, um, and, like, what it's going to be like going forward. And if I am faced with that kind of situation again, what am I going to have to do? Like, what kind of problems am I going to need to solve going forward? Things like that. I would imagine it would motivate you to, like, if you're ever like, eh, I don't feel like going to the gym today, and you'd be like, wait a minute. Yeah. I can just access that memory yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna go straight to the gym right yeah that makes sense yeah ben so, put it best you had that extra option and thanks to that option it gave you the cool headedness exactly you are very cool headed emma thank you it's very cool do you have to go to work it's 11 20 you gotta go to work do you have to go oh um let me see, see time long. flies we t- like yeah. time flies yeah when, when it's we been say, like yeah, 90 minutes be, you know, an hour and a half two hours yeah. you know, however whatever we feel and Makes it sound like, oh my god, this is gonna take so freaking long, and then yeah, you right. Sit down and it it's a right fifteen minute drive, so I can leave at like eleven thirty. Hi Nova, yeah. I appreciate your confidence. She said she puts ten on me, and I I appreciate it, but I think she might lose. The oh, money. are people going off because I seem overconfident? Uh, just just this one guy, uh, Don. That's Zinger, interesting. I which mean, is, I d- which is interesting considering that. I mean, you said that and then immediately said, I don't know, that might be too much confidence. So, yeah, yeah, like no offense, Don Zinger, but you're you're not saying anything that hasn't been acknowledged here. I have <laughs> I have thought about that. Like there is an element where I'm like, ah, I can do crap. Like I can handle anything. But like, yeah, but she. It's, oh, it's, I'm sorry. I Did I say she? Wait, <laughs> we haven't. OK. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. But uh, what was she, I? She. They are but, we working yeah, in. It's it's not like you it's not like you tried to get in the guy's face and made the situation worse. Like it sounds like you made exactly the right call. So yeah. like objectively speaking, are you dangerously overconfident? Well, no. Right. <laughs> well, your dad said that too. Being able to, you could put him in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, theoretically, you could. I've seen it. Like I was shocked at the comp the physical competence of the people in the gym. So. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Go, Emma! <laughs> <laughs> it's their tricky situation. I'm Gotta. sorry, Nova. I fucked up. <laughs> Thank you for the confidence still. I'll, you're going to lose the bet, but I appreciate oh it. Oh, my God! Comcha. 
I don't think she's actively. Are you actively walking the streets looking for a fight? I'm sure I'm not. I get enough fighting in the gym, <laughs> like, <laughs> on the fucking daily basis, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, so my brother-in-law is an MMA fighter, which is, yeah. you know, I mean, that is also a sport, but on the, on the, on the scale of. <laughs> Taekwondo, you know, it's just a sport to an actual street fight. It's yeah. closer to where Krav Maga is. Right. And before meeting him, you know, people have all kinds of preconceived notions about certain types of athletes. If all you had told me about him was he's an MMA fighter, I would have thought, oh, you know, super aggressive, macho asshole jock type, yeah. you know. And he's, I don't know if it's just that he gets it out of his system in the ring or yeah. or what, but he's just the biggest, gentlest teddy bear in the world. And yeah. I follow him on social media. He's not actively, I say he's an <laughs> MMA fighter. He's retired and he's mm. in a different line of work now. But I followed him when he was, you know, actively, you know, had matches every so often. And... Uh, uh, on like social media, Twitter and stuff. And he puts on, you know, this whole aggressive because, you know, yeah. it's part of the show for yeah. the audience. Yeah. And it was really interesting seeing. I mean, it's not like it was fake. It's right. part of his identity that he can express when he chooses to. Yeah. But it was really interesting seeing that side of him versus the side of him, you know, when he's with my sister, with his kids, with like. Yeah. Yeah. Not. You know, at at the absolute worst end of that stereotype, it would be like, oh, do you feel safe with your sister being married? To like, yeah, absolutely, because yeah. I have seen the way he interacts with her, and right, n never for a second have I felt worried about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I know an MMA fighter too, and he's a big old teddy bear. But holy shit, can he fight? Yeah. I didn't realize even until doing this. Like, I watch these MMA fights, and I'm like, why are they getting so tired? <laughs> Dude, I didn't so know. Much. It's so much. I didn't know. Now I know. Yeah. I think it's like just part of like the mental stress of a fight as well because there's so much happening in your mind that like yeah. doing this is not that tiring. Right. When alone, you're really but doing when you're it. like, it yeah. can be exhausting. Agreed. They're having a discussion about how I called Nova ma'am. I think, do you know that movie with, um, or she, that movie, Nova Lee? Like, there's a movie with um, Natalie Portman. Her name's Nova Lee. And I think that's, I, I'm feeling really bad. Are we cool? Are we cool? I feel bad. We've been buds for a long time and I fucked it up. Um, yeah, because now there's a whole conversation about calling people the wrong gender. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm interested in the story about being called man to the face despite having a full beard. That sounds like a good story. Could they have been saying man? Hey, man. Hey, man. I'm sorry, man. No, it probably doesn't. The context is pretty different. <laughs> right. I was called a dude in the eighth grade. I had super short hair and I like to wear clothes from structure. And none of you guys probably know what that story is. But it was like the dude's equivalent to express. And I don't know why it was like cool to wear big baggy shit back then. Dude Everybody is one of those weird dude. words where it can be inclusive of both genders, but sometimes it's very specifically male. Dude? Yeah. My kids say mm. dude a lot to I their say, female friends. I say dude a lot. You've said, yeah, you've called me dude. And I, like, I'm like, oh, she yeah. knows I'm a lady. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But then you can also say, well, were they girls or dudes? And people will know what you mean. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Like I remember the day in here, there was discussion about how I was too masculine and you were too feminine. Do you remember <laughs> what? that? Yeah, yeah, we get trolls in here sometimes. We get some trolls. That was pretty funny. Oh, my God. Yeah. I was, it was a weird one. That was a weird one. Yeah. 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 They didn't, they didn't show up again. Trolls don't last long. Here. <laughs> God, what are we even? La, 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 la. Why be hostile? Relax. Is there hostility? True. I don't have my glasses on. I'm trying to keep <laughs> up. Dude is gender neutral. Raise your hand if you agree. I See, I think it can be. I think it depends on context. Hmm. I think it can be gender neutral. I think anybody under the age of 24 who uses dude is gender neutral. How's that for a theory? I feel like it goes higher. How high? You're trying to make me look old. <laughs> 28. 28. All right. All right. That works. I'll accept that theory. 
Yeah, I mean, Zerikin about, um... brings up a good point. If if you were to just, like, in text, have no idea the, the gender or sexual orientation of the person, and you just read the sentence, I've banged a lot of dudes, you're going to assume dudes is exclusively male. Yes. That's I would. True. I think it was dudes. Yay, I'm glad you're here, Nova. I'm glad As he is here. <laughs> 20, oh, wait, who's 28. Um, J N N P one two three. I like the rhyming. J two N P one two three. But yeah, I don't know. I got like uh, Mr. Nova. I got a couple more minutes. You guys want to ask anything else or? Yeah, ask ask Emma. It's have an AMA with Emma. <laughs> AMA correlated for Emma. All you young whippersnappers. I've used the word whippersnapper. I've used the word whippersnapper. I don't think I've ever used it non-ironically. Though. I was going to say, yeah. did you use it ironically? Mm. I think I might have too. I don't know. I'm <laughs> old. What do you think the average age of your audience is, Ben? Um, you know what? There's there's probably analytics on that. Are you like an old man to them? D- I, I think I am older than m- most of... Well, I think I am older than the average age of my audience. Let's put it that way. Okay. All right. Ben is dad, right? Yeah. They call him Papa Ben because it's adorable. <laughs> oh, my God. I Papa know. Ben. <laughs> That's really sweet. Bye, Nova. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like we're kind of winding down. You got to get yeah. to work soon so we yeah. can we can call it. Cool. But I did. Oh, oh, as I say that, we get a question. Toko asks, what's your defense advice to someone who has little to no fighting experience? Um don't give up like do anything and everything you can i mean i'm like a lot of people say this that someone who is attacking you is not expecting the person to fight back so fight back anything you know you know the vulnerable points because you're a human being (laughs) so eyes groin soft tissue like use anything you can you just gotta fight back and don't give up even if you're tired and scared (laughs) well and someone said up there they're like uh i'll give them points for doing the things you guys can do the things like get out and do the things like even if it like go look up your local google your local crav place and a free trial class what do you have to lose like yep an hour of netflix you know that's what i lose when i go yeah i mean that's that's kind of kind of one of the ideas behind why i wanted to sort of convert this talk show thing that we do into more of a let's do a field trip and take some that's video that's what we've been is, doing we've done yeah. dancing we did ice bath we yep. did crav yeah what is a random seed <laughs> uh that's that's the the video game that i usually do here when i oh. don't have guests over yeah oh, uh, <laughs> oh dear didn't we play that game last oh, week <laughs> it was... different game not okay. not mario zelda but it was a game i it played was. a game yes you did play a game i went into ben's <laughs> world do, 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 do. It was as boring as you imagine. Um, <laughs> this is really getting intense. Why is that sword moving? I have a kid who's home from school today, yeah. and she is mm-hmm. getting bored. <laughs> <laughs> so she's moving the sword. Do you want to pop up and say hi? There she is. <laughs> kid sighting. This is my youngest daughter. She, it's a child person. Do you want to wave? The camera's right there. Say hi. There you go. And you can go back down. <laughs> <laughs> hi, AJ. You got a hi, AJ's kid and a hi, child. Isn't that nice? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bella yeah. Tala kind of brought up a good point. What's up? Um, some people probably wouldn't think like when we're talking fight or flight we're talking about that again your instincts would be to flight or freeze Mm -hmm. um yeah that works too if you can run away run away i mean we practice running away in croft like as soon as your you know the defense is neutralized run but we practice it (laughs) we're like run to the exit (laughs) eric said that several times he's like do this so you can get away yeah yep i mean all krav is is just creating space for you to run yeah that's smart yeah so yeah it's interesting that's why it's important to go i think so that 
fight becomes an option. Yeah. That was a really good way of putting it. Like you had one more. I, somebody agree. You one more. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to exercise the option in every situation. Just. Right. Yeah. I think it was an interesting discussion too. Thank you for coming, Emma. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You're you should join us on other adventures. I will. Yeah. <laughs> what will our next adventure be? Do we have anything? Um, I, I still like the, the dancing idea. I need to get to like actually taking video and doing more of a making more of a thing. Out yeah, because we didn't do a video in that one. Yeah. Who so do I you got to talk to about that? Yeah, I got uh, I got a message. Uh, it's either Roseanne or Roxanne, and I feel real bad that I don't know which it is. But I got to message the instructor and make sure that that's kosher. kosher. I assume it would be because she's always posting. She'll take just like a little cell phone video and post it on Facebook as a promotional thing. Mm-hmm. But I got to make sure for. Yeah. Did I stand up? Did I give you yeah. the picture? Of, I don't think I ever posted the picture from your most recent stand up. Oh, I even though you had. did I? I think so. Did I tweet it to you? I think so. Okay, I could be wrong. I don't know. We had one stand up in the little dive bar, and then Ben did a bigger like open mic night stand up at like an actual comedy joint. Yeah, I should see because they sent an email around. And it was like a week ago, so it might be full up now. But did I you enjoy see. it? Did you enjoy the stand-up? Yeah, yeah, I did. I think I would like to do that again, too. Yeah. Because but- Adrian did it, too. I don't know if you guys remember Adrian from yeah, yeah. the ice bath. She did it, and she had a blast. Yeah. Was she was, fun. yeah. So I did not. I was uncomfortable <laughs> enough being in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck. But, yeah, so we'll do another thing. We could do more dancing. What, can, what do you think a good field trip would be? Can you think of something uh, like an adult gymnastics class? Oh God! <laughs> I would break something. Um, I don't know. Yeah, do stand ups a good one? Think about it. What do you guys have suggestions? What's something we could do? Uh, you tried, know, there's a trapeze school. I tried and failed to climb the highest mountain in in Arizona to get to the peak of Mount Humphreys. Yeah, oh. and I want to try and do that again. Uh, spelunking there's actually a cave that I have all the equipment and we were gonna go and it's up in Flagstaff and it didn't go and we have to go before it gets too cold yeah. so I'll put that on the list oh Dang. heck yeah I've, if it's up in Flagstaff I think I know the cave it's like okay. the, the, the lava tubes with yeah the and it's like even getting in it it's like really yeah yeah Yeah, you have to like belly into it yeah I've been to that one a couple of times have you really up there yeah it's great we Ooh, totally go if that's something you're interested in yeah, I would love it amazing do you want to go sure awesome <gasps> Cool. All right. We'll put it on the list. Yeah, we'll put Emma's got to go to work. Yeah. And I okay, got yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to. This one's popping I'm her head out. out. She's right. over it. <laughs> thank you guys. Be, yes, thank you guys. I will be back on later on today because Borderlands just came out. Ooh. We'll do the schedule thing. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Say bye.